Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, February 7th. The police chief of Somerset in Wisconsin explained in detail why the department decided to go electric with the Tesla Model Y patrol car. There are an impressive number of police departments around the world realizing that electric vehicles are the perfect solution to reduce costs and meet environmental goals. The Somerset Police Department chief explained that the department is in it for the money, saying it will save them over $80,000 over the course of 10 years, thanks to the benefits of the low cost of operation. EVs are becoming more common for police forces here in the U.S., with the Model 3 being the most popular choice. Some departments have gone with the Mustang Mach-E, although the recent price decreases from Tesla may see a surge in municipality orders. Genesis North America has announced the official expansion of EV sales into its 13th state. That's right, Genesis EVs are exclusive to just a handful of places, typically where EVs sell the best, but there are some exceptions. Today, Genesis announced its latest state for EV sales is Colorado. The state most proud of its state flag now joins a mix of states depending on the model. The GV60 is in Arizona, California, Colorado now, Connecticut, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, Utah for some reason, and the state of Washington. The electrified GV80 adds Maryland, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Virginia. I'm not sure why they chose Utah, as there are a lot of other places that typically sell more electric vehicles, like Florida, Illinois, Texas, Hawaii, and let's not forget Oregon. Mercedes-Benz has unveiled its new 2024 eSprinter electric van, and it's a significant update compared to the first version, now having a usable range. The original version unveiled in 2019 wasn't available in the USA, and it only had two small battery pack options, resulting in a very limited range of just over 100 kilometers. I think that's about 62 miles of range. Today, Mercedes officially unveiled the 2024 eSprinter and confirmed that it will be offered here in the States, and will have a battery option scoring 300 miles of range. Quite the improvement, I would say. They say that it will come in the U.S. in the second half of 2023. Mercedes says that it is investing $50 million in factories in Charleston, Dusseldorf, and Ludwigsfeld to produce the new version. This week's episode is sponsored by SAE International, host of the WCX World Congress Experience event. For 2023, WCX is set to return to Detroit from April 18th to 20th at Huntington Place. As the largest technical mobility event in North America, WCX brings together thousands of engineers, suppliers, and mobility professionals to exchange ideas, discuss today's challenges, and build powerful relationships to move your career and the industry forward. Join the global mobility community in the Motor City this April to stay up to date on the latest technological advances, participate in roundtable discussions, and network with the brightest minds in the industry. Gain a competitive advantage and meet the people shaping the future of mobility. Visit wcx.sae.org to register now. Ford has released a feel-good video showcasing their advanced driver's assist features and highlighting the hands-free driving using a deaf driver and passenger. In the video, a mother and son, who are both deaf, use Ford's Blue Cruise hands-free feature in a Mustang Mach-E. I actually have a strong opinion on this matter, since my family uses sign language as my wife and child have hearing loss. Stay tuned for my opinion at the end of today's stories. A word of warning from Electrek, invest wisely. Alpha Motor is raising money from small investors at $125 million for its electric pickup truck that hasn't made it terribly far. The company has claims that sound pretty darn amazing, a good-looking truck in the picture that is supposedly going to be $36,000 and getting 275 miles of range. The truck only exists as a pusher body put on display in a museum, but after digging a bit deeper, we couldn't find anyone with real engineering experience at the company. The person with the most automotive experience appears to be the founder and CEO, Edward Lee, but his experience is limited to exterior design. Looking at his work history, it appears that he is a modeler and not particularly an engineer. Of course, it's not insurmountable, but it would be quite expensive to produce a car, as the talent to make the entire propulsion system would need to be acquired. Alpha Motors has launched a crowdfunding effort to raise up to $5 million from the general public. Alpha Motors is targeting small investors, hoping to raise some money to bring it to production. But as we've seen from many other companies in various stages, $5 million doesn't get you terribly far. 
They optimistically value the company itself as worth $125 million. But the justification for that is achieving 52,000 what they call pre-order indications, which is a non-binding purchase agreement. A risky bet, if you ask us. Depending on how much Alpha can raise in this round, it expects to be able to support itself for 7 to 13 months, and they plan to use the proceeds to find further investment in order to bring the vehicles to market, hopefully by 2025. This seems like a leapfrog or a lily pad effect, going from one investment round to another while making slow progress on the actual vehicle. A U.S. District Court judge has upheld the federal government's decision to approve the Thacker Pass lithium mine. Conservationalists, indigenous communities, and a local rancher challenged the federal approval of the mine, arguing that the government failed to analyze the environmental impact and did not thoroughly consult indigenous groups. The lithium deposits at Thacker Pass is believed to have estimated reserves of approximately 1.3 million tons of very valuable lithium carbonate equivalent. I choose to say that now because the Nevada Independent writes, quote, Judge Miranda M. Dew found the U.S. Bureau of Land Management generally did not err in approving the permit for the massive lithium mine, but asked the agency to revisit one section of the environmental analysis upon which the decision was based. And wouldn't you know it, it turns out that last week, General Motors announced that it signed a $650 million deal with Lithium Americas to jointly develop the Thacker Pass project. Perhaps they found out before the local news. Okay, it is opinion time, and in regards to Ford's video of deaf people using the advanced driver's assist with hands-free mode to communicate, uh, it's kind of hard because there are two sides to the story that are equally true, and they do exist at the same time. My reaction to this video is both good and bad. On the good side, it's true that the eventuality of fully autonomous cars will enable better communication across the board, but especially for those who are deaf since they use their eyes to hear and their hands to speak. This is a great move for a more shared and open experience, and I'm glad that this technology will exist. That is true. But what is also true is that this technology is not complete, and in my opinion, it might give a false sense of security. Deaf people not only use their hands to communicate, but they use their eyes to listen. Having hands-free driving is half a solution, but not complete. Let me tell you a story. Back at the start of COVID, a friend of mine who works as a safety manager for a large manufacturing plant, he told me that other plant managers got together from across the country on Zoom to decide what to do about wearing masks, since their deaf employees across the country often read lips. Their solution was that they spent a great deal of time deciding that they would get special transparent masks for the deaf employees. Sounds like a great idea. With the best of intentions, what could possibly go wrong? It didn't occur to the managers that the deaf employees don't work in the same location, let alone on the same team, and they certainly don't read their own lips. The result was that the deaf employees were given these masks that didn't do a whole lot except for single them out more so than they were before. Now, bringing it back to the car commercial, the deaf are not helpless, and many of them take pride in getting by in a world that caters to hearing people. You may find it hard to believe, but deaf people can communicate while driving a car. It's not an ideal situation, and improvements are welcome, but let's not pat ourselves on the back too early. We're still a long way from fully autonomous cars, and let's be honest, when that tech finally does reach the masses, we're going to be so excited that we're not going to notice how it will impact deaf people. In today's community comment found on YouTube, John H. says, Comparing the specs of the Tesla Y to the Lexus is, I think, a bit misleading, as it's obvious the Lexus is a luxury car, while the Tesla is rather bare-boned in comparison. Well, that very well is true about the description of the vehicles, John H., but for years Tesla has been eating a slice of the luxury segment here in the USA. Tesla has been feeding off the buyer that normally went for Lexus, Mercedes, BMW, and other luxury vehicles, even if the main draw wasn't really the vehicle itself, but the status symbol that it represents. And now with Lexus going into electric vehicles, they are now going back towards Tesla's competition. So I think that comparing the two is fair. I agree that Tesla vehicles aren't really all that luxuriant. Myself, I drove a lot of 70s and 80s American land yachts as a teenager. These materials and the space and the features, it was a big part of what shaped my vehicle tastes. But as I grew up, other things had their appeal and I remember stepping into a Model 3 not terribly long ago, thinking, this is really cheap, 
And why is this a signal of opulence? And despite my personal opinions, the general opinion that Tesla is a luxury vehicle still seems to keep going. Someday we might even hear Dave Ramsey say that the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of Tesla as the status symbol of choice. Thanks for your comment, John H. And thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great status symbol.